Jacob celebrated diversity, density, the mix of people, all of the things that we're all talking about, mingling, people on different schedules. You're all saying, well, but these principles are now being adopted into city planning in this wonderful way by everybody. But we're looking at cities that are more class divided than ever before, more racially divided by, than ever before. We have in this city a net exflux now. Is there such a thing as an exflux? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a net exodus of African Americans and Puerto Ricans from New York City for the first time you know, since before Jane Jacobs' time. We have, I was just the other day, yesterday up at the Brooklyn Armory um, site where you've had this extraordinary community organization managed to secure a community benefits agreement from the developer. Um, but the developer's plan is to make the largest ever skating rink <laughs> right there in the Bronx on Knightsbridge Avenue. So these community benefits will be contingent on a skating rink suddenly becoming a really huge success in the middle of the Bronx. Maybe the NHL is about to look very different. <laughs> um, but my question is, how do we have this happy story about built city building in a very scary time, I think, for the principles that Jane talked about and the way that she lived. Greenwich Village is a very different place. Chelsea is a very different place. Tribeca, I. Um, <laughs> well, I think you my, my neighborhood, Soho, used to be pleasantly scary. <laughs> when I go to, let's say, Baisley Park, which is a NYCHA project north of JFK, and I look at that, and I think, first of all, I can't even get there by subway. And there are these Corbusian buildings sitting in these unusable lawns with fences around them and playgrounds that are broken and, and no place to shop, no place to eat. It's completely disconnected. It's isolated from the urban fabric. And it really is a huge challenge of, you know, if, if you want an experience of being able to get places easily and enjoy nature a few steps from your house and have all the things that those of us who live in Tribeca or you know, the Upper West Side have, how do you start to, what, what's the equation to bring that into these other neighborhoods? And I think that it does involve public-private partnerships. I think it involves everything we're talking in, about. I think, you know, the developers in New, York are, in New York are progressive and they're smart and they want to do a good job. I think that, um, you know, that developers who focus on building community are really able to do it. How can we bring the right people together to start to weave this back in to the communities? And we're looking at that with BIG, where we're focusing on um, the Sandy recovery. And how do we protect lower Manhattan and other neighborhoods from the next surge? And you know, on the one hand, you need to make a big infrastructure move. You know, the question is, after Robert Moses, can New York stomach a major move? Could, could we build a green belt like Chicago has all around lower Manhattan and have it be a levee that's occupied with wonderful, that looks like Riverside Park all around lower Manhattan? Maybe not. You know, so then you start to scale that down and you say, well, what can we do um, you know, in Hudson River Park? What can we do in Tribeca? What can do, we do in Chelsea? What can we do at the tip? And then you come around to the housing above the Brooklyn Bridge and you say, well, how can we protect those communities, maybe with a major park move, with a, with a levy, um, with a subway running under it and the FDR under it, so we're creating this wonderful parking connection to the waterfront, and then how can we weave that, you know, take the Lower East Side and start to weave it into those isolated buildings and create places? So that's really the challenge that we're grappling with as we speak. We're not just talking about making places, we're actually talking about building community and making places where very different kinds of people who have either very different opportunities or very different struggles can come together and find value in each other's success. Do things. Yeah, and so to me, being an arts person, not someone who makes buildings, it, it's so much about, and Mary, I think the way you articulated it is, is quite beautiful, it, it's so much about how we integrate our value into a system. I think what we need is new social systems. Mm. We need a new continuum or an understanding of a continuum that connects par you know, through partnerships and programs, art making, place making, workshops, mentorships, jobs. Like We need to make connections and understand how we actually all are in this together 
and each of us, whether we're architects, designers, artists, social service workers, policymakers, is a part of that continuum. Mm -hmm.